Gustafson coming back again. Can we say that? He's made a couple of comebacks. He's going to take on Paul Craig. And number of things I love about this. I mean, this popped off the page for me. First thing, right? Of course, I got to continue to hammer the nail of the rankings don't matter. Of course, I have to. I don't know what Craig is ranked. Certainly, he's got a beautiful ranking, right? He just beat Smith who had never been beaten before in a feature, but certainly he's got a great rank. And if I was to guess four, I'm just making that up. I bet you he's four. He's going to fight Gustafson. There's no chance that Gustafson has ranked anything. Now, for all the people that love to say the number four guy should only fight people in front of him. All right, let's move him to three. I mean, let's move Paul Craig and have him fight the number three guy. Who is that? Well, I didn't hear you. Who, who did you say was number three? Oh, okay. So you don't even know who's ranked number three. You just think that he should fight the number three guy. Do you know who Alexander Gustafson is? Of course you do. He was on the cover of a video game. He's a main eventer who's fought for world championships multiple times. So what do you think is better? Should we follow the logic that Craig should fight number three, of which we've yet to identify who that is, but we know with a good solid internet connection and a Search to our trusty Google, we could at least find the name. Or do you fight the guy who everybody knows who was on the cover of the video game? Do you see the difference? Do you really see the difference? I mean, can we, can we put this to rest? Because I read the comments. And while the comments overwhelmingly agree with me, there's still about 3 or 4% of you that seem to think that it goes by the rankings. And I'm just trying to prove the point that it doesn't. You have a platform. Take the guy who can get you the biggest spot on that platform. There's some opponents, including the number three guy, that are not going to get Craig a co-main event spot or better. Alexander Gustafson will do just that. I don't even know the placement of the card. They don't even have a venue picked out. Part of this article I read said that they're targeting potentially London. They don't even have a venue. I'm telling you now they're going co-main or better. All depends if they're on a PPV. If they're not, they're going main. I bring it to you because that's the guy that you want to dance with. The one who can get you the most attention, who can get you the most rub. Because rankings are not where it's at in this sport. This sport, like all of life, perception is reality. You know, I've been half pissed off at Gustafson for a while. Gustafson is somebody that I really like. And I also identified within my own mind. How damn good he was before the rest of the world cut on, caught on. There was a time, Gus was just a guy. He was an up-and-comer. He was pretty tall. If you're going to deal with him, you had to get him to the ground. But if you got him there, you probably could deal with him. I mean, his skills really grew. He, he evolved very quickly. Very similar entrance into the sport of Izzy Adesanya, where he's got the length, he's got the reach, and if he can keep you standing up, it's going to be a long night for you. But if you could get him down, I mean, remember when Adesanya came out? That was kind of the blueprint that everybody thought, okay, get him down and, and keep him down. All right. Well, Gus was that same way until he wasn't. He started training with Mr. Wonderful, starts getting these reps and starts learning things, starts learning anaconda tokes, starts learning these takedown defenses. So watching his growth was incredible, but there was a time when Rich Franklin, who just got removed from being champion of the world, refused to fight him. And that was a huge signal for me because Rich knows what he's looking at. Rich is an expert, not only great at the sport, but he's an expert at what he's looking at. And he looked at Gus and said, no thanks. For right now, no thanks. But that was a big sign. That was a big clue. That was a tremendous compliment. And Gus probably wanted the fight. He was probably angry with Rich. But the other side of it is you just got a nod from the champ, a big compliment. Gus goes through his career and at one point got tired. And I don't mean that his cardio was bad. I don't mean he quit in a match because of physical fatigue or unpreparedness. He was tired. He was running around. He's doing press conferences. The biggest star in the sport of Sweden, right? He sells out arenas in Sweden. He brings a whole country with him. So he's got to go back there. He's got to come back. I mean, it's just a lot of bouncing around. Every fight that he does is a main event. Extremely heavy lifting. And then the way he fights is just rough. It's just one of those things where he was tired. So he decides that he's going to retire from the sport. It's like, Gus, wait a minute. Wait. You don't have to only fight main events, which come with a huge media obligation, a lot of time, a lot of energy. 
but it's also five rounds. So not only is the night itself harder than everybody else's, the preparation in the night itself is harder than everybody else's. Instead of stopping completely, how about we go to co-main? How about we go to three rounds? Little less media, little less pressure, way to stay busy, freshen yourself up a little bit. Now, that's always going to be a hard sell. If you're with a promotion and their job is to put, promote you, right? Put you as high as they can. It's a hard sell. But if you juxtapose that against I'm out completely, okay, I think everybody's going to listen. Gus didn't do that. He took himself out completely. Then he comes back. He does it at heavyweight. I mean, just there was, there was all these things that happened that didn't need to happen. <sighs> Couple of deep breaths. Oars out of the water. Turn your phone off. Two weeks, stay at home, watch some television. One of these things. Rest is what I'm talking about. Rest, but not physically. Gus was fine physically, mentally. He was tired. And it was very clear in his fight with Lionheart. Very clear. Gus looked great. He's bouncing around. He's moving like he always is. He's pumping jabs. He looked great. He got put in a position. It was going to require some effort. Or... He could stay right there, and the, the referee can be used as a tag team partner to pull Lionheart off him, and you can all go in the back. You're going to go in the back in second place, but you can get to the back anyway, which you're so tired. That's all that you want to do, and that's what happened to him. And I saw it. I knew exactly what I was looking at. Gus wasn't lost in that position. You go re wrap that match, you'll think he's lost in the position. He's confused. He looks like a purple belt. Man, it was none of those things. He was tired mentally, which is a totally different exhaustion. And at some point, you're going to get there. You just are. Everybody. They all have. They've all done it. Be St. Pierre could be what John Jones is going through right now. Man, I got to get up. I got to get out. It's one of those things. It happened to Gus midway through a fist fight. No, he's no different than anyone else. Happened to everybody else too. Some of them just weren't caught on camera. So I only bring this to you because he never needed to stop. And he never needed to change weights. Oh, by the way, when he did change weights up to heavyweight, he never needed to go back down to 205. I love the Gus experiment at heavyweight. He got put in an armbar by the Abu Dhabi champion while he was dry. That's not going to work out well. But Gus gets so, he's so hard on himself. He gets so, fr he gets so mad at himself. Gus said heavyweight. I still like that idea. It's not going to happen. We're going back down to 205. Okay. Let's see where the placement goes. I'm crossing my fingers that it's not a main. I think he needs to be in a co-spot. The other side of the coin is the push that Paul Craig is getting. Paul Craig is about to get in there with the biggest star in all of a country, happens to be Sweden, one of the bigger names in the sport to the fact that he was on the cover of the video game. This is a meaningful fight. You get over on Gus, good things are going to happen to you. It doesn't matter what part of his career it is. So Paul Craig is getting a nod that he's believed in. Big time. That's exactly what this is. His last performance was so impressive, he is now on the radar and he's getting what's called the push. Compliments all around. I want to see this fight. I look forward to this fight. Do I want to see it be three rounds? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And not because physically, the mental side, which is what Gus is working on right in front of us, let's pull for him a little bit. Let's help him out just a little.